In far northern Kentucky, just off the Ohio River, lies Big Bone Lick State Park, an obscure little park with a significant history. The park is named after a mineral spring, or salt lick, that empties into Big Bone Creek, which flows through the park. Animals use salt licks to get minerals and salts that they would otherwise not get in their normal diet. For thousands of years, Big Bone Lick was used by local fauna. Unfortunately, it's located in a very marshy part of the creek. Over the centuries, animals have gotten stuck and died in the mud around the lick. Many of them, large herbivores of various kinds. Their bones littered the bogs surrounding the lick, hence the name Big Bone Lick. These bones were so old, they predated the Native Americans living in the area. The natives used the lick for its healing properties as well as the salt and considered the bones sacred. They believed the bones belonged to a mythical giant buffalo that once roamed the land. In the 1700s, European explorers came into the region. They noted how unusual the bones were and collected samples to send back east and to Europe. George Washington himself owned a large tooth from Big Bone Lick. Science-minded men such as Benjamin Franklin examined the specimens and noted how many resembled elephant bones, only of a much larger size. These bones became associated with an animal dubbed the incognitum. They closely resembled bones of an animal the Russians discovered in Siberia they called a mammoth. Some of the teeth found with the bones at the Lick were similar to elephants, but others had an unusually pointed shape. This led some to postulate the incognitum might be some form of predatory beast, similar to an elephant. Others also thought this creature could still be living in the unexplored West. One who took great interest in the mysterious incognitum was Thomas Jefferson. In 1780, while serving as governor of Virginia, Jefferson began to study bones and tusks taken from Big Bone Lick. When Jefferson was elected president in 1800, he began a more in-depth study of Big Bone Lick in conjunction with a larger project. In 1803, Jefferson sent Meriwether Lewis to meet William Clark in Louisville. They were to explore the territory France had recently sold to the U.S. in the Louisiana Purchase and to set up trade relations with the native tribes found there. The journey was to take Lewis and Clark from St. Louis all the way to the west coast of North America. Jefferson felt strongly that the incognitum and other undiscovered animals might still be living in the new territory. He ordered Lewis to stop at Big Bone Lick on his way to Louisville and collect samples to send back to the capital. Lewis sent Jefferson a large crate, but due to a boating accident on the Mississippi, the specimens never made it. The Lewis and Clark expedition successfully concluded when they returned to St. Louis in 1806. They established relations with the natives and gathered enormous amounts of information about the new territory. They did not, however, find any evidence of the incognitum or other mystery animals still living anywhere. In 1807, Jefferson sent William Clark back to Big Bone Lick in what is now considered the first official paleontological expedition in North America. Clark hired laborers and spent three weeks at the Lick collecting three large crates of bones, teeth, and tusks. These were taken back to the Capitol, where Jefferson put them on display in the East Room of the White House. Several animals were represented in the collection. Among these were specimens belonging to the mysterious incognitum, of which very little was known. After its time at the White House, the collection was divided up. Part of it went to the National Institute of France in Paris another to the American Philosophical Society in Philadelphia. A third part was put into Jefferson's personal collection, but a careless servant had the bones ground up to make fertilizer. Around the same time as Clark's expedition to Big Bone Lick, a deeper study of the bones was being done in France. George Cuvier at the National Museum of Natural History in Paris examined bones previously gathered at the Lick. He determined two different elephant-like animals were present at the Lick. 
One was very much like, if not identical, to the Siberian mammoth discovered by the Russians. The other was shorter and had a heavier build along with very different teeth. Because of the conical shape of its grinding molars, he dubbed this creature Mastodon, or breast tooth. He also determined these teeth were not from a predator as previously thought. When Jefferson sent the new specimens to France, they helped Cuvier confirm his ideas on the two animals' nature. Cuvier wrote a letter back to Jefferson thanking him for the specimens and describing his findings. Jefferson soon accepted his conclusions about the non-predatory nature of the creature and felt the name Mastodon was fitting. Over the next several years, other animals were identified from Clark's collection. An elk moose was discovered. Standing as tall as a moose, the head of an elk, and having a massive set of antlers not resembling either species. Another was a species related to the Arctic musk ox. It had a slimmer build and horns forming an armored plate over its head. It became known as the helmeted musk ox. A massive subspecies of bison was identified. It was larger than modern bison, and its horns were so long they rival those of modern longhorn cattle. Clark also collected what he described as ordinary horse bones that were buried at a great depth. They turned out to belong to an ancient horse ancestor called the complex toothed horse. All horse species went extinct in the Americas eight to 10,000 years ago and weren't seen again until they arrived with the conquistadors in the 1500s. For many years after Clark's expedition, others came to Big Bone Lick to dig and collect bones. Other animals were identified from bones not included in Clark's collection. The most prominent of these was actually identified by Thomas Jefferson himself. Shortly before he was elected president, Jefferson received some bone fragments. They were the leg, foot, and claws of a large creature Jefferson dubbed the Megalonyx, or giant claw. Because of the claws, Jefferson initially thought this animal was a giant lion. It was another he had Lewis and Clark looking for on their trek through the West, but again they found nothing. It was later determined this creature was a giant species of ground sloth. It was eventually given the full name of Megalonyx jeffersoni, or Jefferson sloth. Big Bone Lick has had many lives. For a brief time, the spring was used as a source for a salt factory, but the process to distill the salt became too expensive to remain profitable. Through much of the 1800s, it was a popular tourist attraction for people seeking its natural spring mineral waters. A luxury hotel was built near the spring. But Big Bone Lick's greatest contribution has been to history. The history of native tribes once indigenous to the region. The history of the United States' early expansion across the continent. But its primary contribution to history has been to history itself. American paleontology was born here. Teeth, tusks, and bones taken from Big Bone Lick fueled discoveries of ancient, extinct American fauna for decades. An incredible accomplishment for such an obscure little state park.